can already tell this is going to be an emotional video to make because I can think of few subjects that are more tender and heartbreaking than a child who's been rejected by their family. Being cast out like this can crush someone's self-esteem, make them feel like their place in the world is a mistake. However, it can also be liberating because it can allow them to develop a sense of identity that is separate from what their family has designated for them. So it's interesting how Vigdis Hjorth gives a unique point of view about such a case in her novel Is Mother Dead? The story is narrated from the perspective of successful artist Joanna, who has returned to her native Norway after a long period of absence of multiple decades. And a retrospective of her artwork is going to be shown, and this causes her to reflect on her remaining family, who she's been estranged from uh, for many years. She's aware that her mother and sister inhabit the same city that she's returned to, and she doggedly tries to make contact with them. And when her advances are rejected, she begins stalking her own mother. The reasons for this family rift and the painful feelings surrounding it are gradually revealed as we follow her determination to get some answers. The prose are imbued with a low-key solemnity and simmering resentment because she is not being allowed to be part of her family's life anymore. Having been labeled as the black sheep, she prides herself on her independence and at one point uh, she even remarks, it feels like I am of the earth and not of mum. She's built a career, been in a loving marriage until her husband's death, and also has a thriving adult son of her own. However, there's a longing for a connection with her mother, and she's desperate to know what her mother's life is like now. She's also aware that if her mother dies, she might not even be informed about this. Though this novel is literally full of questions, I think it's notable that there's no question mark in the actual title. In a sense, Joanna is haunting the old life that she's left behind, and I feel like this is a sentiment a lot of people can relate to. If you've ever returned to locations from your childhood, unless you've spent your entire life around the, the same area that you grew up in, uh, because Joanna spends some time uh, revisiting uh, places from her youth, and she's trying to reconcile this image of the woman she grew up with and called mother with this now old woman that she spies on from the, the sidelines. And at one point, um, she realizes that her mother had placed a ghost where she imagined me to be, and she was terrified of it. So why can't Joanna simply part ways with the family who no longer want any contact with her? Joanna ponders this herself as she's doing this against her better judgment, and at one point uh, she states, I yearn for something unattainable, so why can't I just accept the situation as it is? My common sense already has, but pig-headedness makes me right to mum. I don't understand myself. And she realizes that, uh, quote, I've come to terms with losing my mum, but I can't come to terms with mum coming to terms with losing her daughter. Since her mother refuses to discuss it with her, Joanna must become almost like a detective piecing together an answer from what she can observe, the, the little bits and pieces she can find out about her mother's life, but also from what she can remember. The primary reasons for Joanna becoming an outcast are clear, but the deeper motivation 
emotions and the pain that her mother carries with her is harder to discern and understand. Alongside this psychological mystery, there is a tension throughout the novel as we wonder, will she actually be able to speak and make contact with her mother? And can there be a reconciliation after all of this time? I feel like what you get out of this novel is somewhat dependent on what you're willing to put into it, because on the surface, it can feel somewhat repetitive and empty because Joanna is left to speculate about so much. However, seriously pondering the deeper questions at the heart of this novel makes it feel achingly resonant. What obligation should a parent feel towards their child and vice versa? Is it possible to overcome fundamental differences of opinion about how life should be lived in order to maintain a family bond? How do you negotiate levels of personal privacy between family members without creating an emotional distance? Is it a betrayal of trust to speak about private family matters publicly or express them in art. One of the reasons for the break between mother and daughter were a series of paintings by Joanna called Mother and Child, which were exhibited in her family's hometown. And her family uh, interpreted this artwork as unfairly representing their lives, whereas Joanna didn't necessarily intend these paintings to be autobiographical. At first, I found it somewhat frustrating that these paintings aren't described in more detail, nor is Joanna's body of artwork uh, or her technique, um, even though she's apparently prominent enough to deserve a retrospective exhibit. However, as Joanna describes her memories, it's clear that there's a fundamental difference in how Joanna interprets the world around her versus the way that her family views it. When she was younger, Joanna drew pictures which were expressive and symbolic, but her parents felt that they should represent life as closely as possible, like a photograph. This difference in point of view also extends to how they interpret a familial sense of duty and the degrees of emotional connection to one another. The rift that this eventually causes between them is shown to be quietly explosive as we follow Joanna's obsessive investigation. No matter how close or distant you are with your own family, I feel like these are issues that everyone can relate to on some level. And I think it is so interesting that we can sometimes get to this point with our families where we can't help wondering, am I the weird one or are they the weird ones? <laughs> and this question is teasingly probed in this novel where on one level, Joanna's behavior is erratic and intrusive, but then on another level, her family's absolute rejection of her and refusal to speak to her is perversely cruel and viciously cold. Communication is key, and this is something her family won't engage in, uh, but Joanna feels there are so many crucial questions we never ask, except in our most private moments, so many issues we avoid discussing, even though the people who could contribute to clarification and information are still alive. She witnesses her mother and sister routinely visit her father's grave. However, they ignore her even though she is still alive and so close by. It's always felt like a mysterious tragedy to me how people can devote themselves so strongly to the memory of a family member who has died while simultaneously ignoring other members of their family who are still alive. And I found it very moving how this novel dynamically ponders 
this question. Now, this novel has been long listed for this year's International Booker Prize, which prompted me to read it. And on the Booker website, uh, they have comments from all of the judges about each of the books uh, that they've listed and why they've listed them. And they've also just started uh, publishing interviews with both the authors and the translators of all of the long listed books. Um, so I'll put links uh, to these in the description uh, below if you want to check them out. But I'm going to read out the, the comments uh, for Is Mother Dead? Uh, so the judges say, this is a dark, chilling book. One of its tricks is to rely on a narrator who is an anti-heroine and who can be annoying because of her narcissism and her malice. That's what makes her real and what makes us care about her. This novel provides a very fine and cruel understanding of family relationships, the violence of the mother-daughter dynamic, which reminds us of Mar Marguerite Duras, the impossibility of getting to know each other within the same family, family life as a prison of secrets and silence. Vigdis Hjorth manages to create a lot of suspense, a thriller-like tension, and what is amazing is that you can never really know whose side you are on. And yeah, I, I think um, that, that really describes this novel well, and the sense of her being an unlikable character, uh, and who is so self-obsessed and really focused in her determination. Uh, but we can all relate to this, I think, um, as we start to understand the complications of familial relations, you know, as they are, are played out. And also how I felt this shifting sense of sympathy throughout the, the book, especially as we start to see moments of the mother and daughter's relationship and, and scenes um, from Joanna's childhood. It's also really interesting reading the author interview, and she doesn't discuss it in this particular interview, but I know she's discussed in other interviews how close this novel is to the bone, and that Vig Dishorth has also experienced like big rifts within her, her own family. But it's interesting how she describes in becoming a mother herself how this obviously really changes her ideas about motherhood and it has changed again now that she has become a grandmother. Also it's interesting how she describes the importance of translation, how she's only been able to read the authors Thomas Bernhard and Proust in translation and she feels in some ways closer to these men that she's just read on the page than other men that she's known in real life. It's also fun how she recommends uh, the Copenhagen trilogy, um, which was finally translated into English um, a few years ago, and a lot of people were discussing. Um, this is by Tove Ditlivsen, and uh, I only read the first part of, or the first book in this trilogy, um, because I could tell it was, it was going to be so heartbreaking, and I'd heard that there's a kind of downward spiral in her life that I just couldn't continue, even though I thought the, the writing was absolutely amazing. Um, she also recommends the Norwegian author uh, Dag Solsted, who I've never heard of before, um, but who I, I looked up and a number of his books have been translated into English. And he did write a book called uh, Professor Anderson's Night. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, because my surname is Anderson, I have to read this novel now, even though it spells Anderson Ron, it spells it S-E-N rather than S-O-N, like my name. It's also really interesting reading the interview with uh, Charlotte Barsland, uh, the translator of Is Mother Dead? And uh, she says, it's a paradox that the better I translate, the more I erase myself, and yet there is so much of me in every book I translate. And yeah, I think that must be such like an interesting dilemma uh, for a translator, you know, as you try to get the words and the meaning exactly right in the book, um, you're also sort of lessening your own interpretation of it. But translation is so much about in interpretation. And that's partly why 
I, I think this prize is so interesting and why translated uh, fiction is so, so interesting and why I really enjoy following this prize. So thank you um, for watching me discuss this book. I would love to know if you've read it, if you have any thoughts about it or uh, around any of the, the issues um, concerning families that I've talked about, um, or if you're interested in reading this novel now, um, please let me know about that in the, the comments. It'd be really great to have a discussion about it, this book um, because, yeah, it is a real really emotional emotional <laughs> subject matter and I was getting like choked up a couple times just discussing it and definitely while I was reading um, this book uh, but I, I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon bye bye